So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything that I recommend for an all-in-one PC during this pandemic. It's going to be able to game, stream, and also edit any of the video or gameplay that you record. Let's go. Yo, what's the deal? My name's Josh and I'm here bringing you the best tips and tools when it comes to online gaming and live streaming. And on this channel, we do tech gear reviews and PC builds just like the one you're about to see right now. Also, if you're new to the page, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because you don't want to miss out on any of the valuable content that's coming up ahead. So as we start this video, I wanted to point out a couple of things. This is $800 PC, okay? And we're in a pandemic. So yes, I know that this isn't a true $800 PC, but this is what you can get during this pandemic season. Now, also keep in mind, this is editing, gaming, and for streaming. So with that said, first thing we're gonna start off with is our storage. What did we use? We started off with the NVMe Evo 970. Why this? Because one, when this is on your motherboard, and you have your operating system and your main games, they boot up like that. This is only 250 gigabytes and I got this for $84.99. The next part of your storage is gonna be your hard drive. Now for $52.99, the hard drive I chose is the Seagate Barracuda. This is a two terabyte hard drive. You can store all your games, all your videos, and any photos that you have to edit in here. The case that we're gonna be starting this build off is going to be the NZXT H510. At a $70 price point, you get style, durability, and functionality. This is my second PC build using this case. There's so much room and the cable management makes it so easy to build it. The CPU that I chose for this $800 build is Ryzen 5 2600. At a $150 price point, I had to get it. This CPU is a six core 12 thread processor. The max boost clock of 3.9 and the base clock of 3.4. It has a total cache memory of 19 and a TDP of 65, with RAM compatible at 2933. Also, the great thing about this is that it comes with a cooler out of the box, so you're not having to buy any additional cooler or waste any money on that. So the motherboard that I chose for this build is a B450M DS3H. Now, I'm gonna be quite frank with you. This is not an exciting motherboard. It only has everything you need, nothing more, nothing less. The motherboard does have some RGB, but it's not anything to be excited about. The good thing about this motherboard is its price point at $72.99. The motherboard does have four slots for RAM, which is a plus, so upgrading RAM in the future is not an issue. So speaking about the future, the great thing about this motherboard as well is that it is Ryzen 3000 ready out of the box, meaning you can take a third gen CPU and put this right in without having to update the BIOS. The next part of the build is going to be the power supply. And at a $54 price point and 500 watts, I had to get this one. So this one right here is an 80 plus certified power supply. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't like ketchup and mustard. And when I was looking at the images online, it was all black. Unfortunately, this has a little bit of ketchup and mustard. I normally don't do that, but for $54, we're still good. And it's more than enough to power this whole system. Now the RAM that's gonna be into this system is going to be the Aegis 16 gigabytes DDR4 3200 megahertz. Now one thing to note is that Ryzen 5 26 RAM compatibility is at 2933. So we actually have faster RAM than what the CPU can hold. However, this just gives you some extra room for growth in the future if you tend to go with the Ryzen 3000 series. And at the price point of $64, it's not hurting our budget at all. Now, I personally love all the RGB and this is the first time I ever bought some RAM that didn't have it. However, this RAM has very nice metallic covering and the red accents definitely still make it stand out. So the best for last guys, it's gonna be the graphics card, the GPU. GeForce GTX 1660 Super made by Gigabyte. The sucker. This sucker is bad. And at the price point of $300, $250, couldn't pass it up. I gotta show you this, guys. Take a look. Thank you. 
This Gigabyte 1660 Super has three 80 millimeter unique blade fans featuring alternate spinning for efficient heat dissipation. Also, the pure copper heat pipes are shaped to maximize the direct contact area to the GPU for enhanced thermal transfer, meaning this GPU is not going to be hot. As I said before, I love all the RGB and this graphics card comes with RGB Fusion 2.0. You can choose lighting effects or synchronize with other Aorus devices. Another thing I thought that was super cool about this was that the backplate not only provides an aesthetic shape, but enhances the structure of the graphics card to provide complete protection. This graphics card has three display ports and one HDMI slot. The Gigabyte 1660 Super is a three fan six gigabyte GDDR6. The three 80mm unique blade fans features alternate spinning for efficient heat dissipation, called wind force.
right, real quick, two things. Lioness and Bitwit make it seem a whole lot easier than what I just did. This is hard. And second, just because I plug things in doesn't mean it's done. And it doesn't mean you're done when you plug stuff in. Make sure to go behind and get all the cable management. Make sure everything's lined up nice uh, and tidy. So I'm gonna be doing that right now. So there you have it guys, an $800 PC build that does gaming, streaming, and video editing all in one system. It's always fun to build these PCs and very exciting to record them for you. So let me know what you thought of this video, and if you have any suggestions for future ones, drop them down below. And like always guys, peace out. You don't want to miss out on any of the valuable content. I hate this!